Setting up your first Facebook lead generation campaign can feel overwhelming, but it's easier than you think. In this video, I'll show you step-by-step -step how to create a Facebook ad campaign that uses Facebook's built-in lead formats. That way, by the end of this video, you'll be able to generate high-quality leads without needing a website, landing page, or any complicated tools. So we're just gonna get straight into it. For this video, I'll assume that you already have your ad creatives done and your ad copy and headlines done. This is not a video about ad creatives or ad copy. I could make a whole video about this. I'm just gonna show you exactly how to create the structure of your campaign for this. So what we're doing here is we're building a built-in Facebook lead campaign. So this means you can create a campaign using Facebook's embedded lead forms and you therefore don't need a website to do this. And this can be done in multiple different ways. You can either use a lead magnet, you can offer promo codes, or you can just have a simple lead form. For today's video specifically, as an example, I'll be running ads to build up a subscriber base for this company right here which sells water sports memberships for the summer and what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a lead form ad which in exchange for the information offers a 10% off promo code for the sign up so to build this what you're gonna do is you're gonna go on the left here in your Facebook Ads Manager and you're gonna click on campaigns to have your campaign dashboard and the first thing we're gonna do is click on create right here and the goal of this campaign is going to be lead so I'm gonna select that and click on continue Next thing is we're going to name this campaign. So I'm gonna call this SWS, so that's the company name, lead form ads for 10% off discount code that we're gonna embed in our lead form. So that's the title. Next, we're gonna scroll down. I'm gonna create a CBO for this. So the difference being that CBO is when you set a campaign budget, ABO is when you set an ad set budget. So I want this money to be distributed across all the different ad sets I'm going to create because Facebook tends to be better than you are when it comes to distributing your budget and showing ads to the correct people at the right time. So I'm gonna set this to $50 a day, specifically under a campaign budget. The campaign bid strategy as high as volume volume is fine. This is what we want to go for in terms of lead gen. So that's fine here. I'm not going to do any AB tests. And in terms of special ad categories, I don't have anything to declare. But keep in mind that if you're doing financial products, employment, housing, or social issues, you're going to want to tick this box. But for now, I don't have to do this. And that is the first part of my campaign done. So now I can click on the next button. And now we're gonna start creating our ad group. The ad group is where all the targeting happens. You can watch my first video on how to build Facebook ad campaigns and on the different types of targeting. Usually when you start out, going full broad is usually the best move. And then you can start narrowing down your targeting as you start to get results in and using interests, lookalikes, things of the sort. But usually if this is your first time, go full broad. It'll usually give you a better result that way. So my ad set name, I'm gonna be targeting specifically Vancouver and Squamish. Those are going to be the two locations I'm targeting and that's because this water sports company is based in one of those locations. So I'm just targeting a radius around both of them. And so I'm going to call my ad group something associated to that. And I can call it, let's say Vancouver and Squamish like that. That way my targeting is clear in the ad set name. Next, the conversion location. So this is actually going to be none of these three options. I'm gonna click on single right here and click on instant forms because we'll be using the embedded Facebook lead forms for this. So. I'm gonna click on that. Next, it asks for the identity, so the Facebook page that you're running your ads from. I'm gonna type in SWS or Squamish Wind Sports Society and click on that. So just pick your business name for that one specifically. The performance goal, I'm going to maximize the number of leads. I don't want a cost per result goal and I don't want any assigned values to my leads. So I can leave all of this open and scroll down. In terms of budget and scheduling now, I'm not gonna to touch any of this because I'm on a CBO. So that is set to the campaign level. So I don't wanna mess around with any ad set limits or start dates or end dates or any of that. I wanna just turn this campaign on and just let it run continuously. That way the company is continuously getting leads every single day. So I don't wanna mess with that and I don't wanna mess with an end date either. I can scroll past this. Now the audience, this is where I'm gonna start implementing my targeting. Like I said, I'm just gonna go full broad here and I'm gonna target specifically Vancouver and Squamish as my two locations. What I wanna do is I want to edit this in terms of the locations. Right now it's set to Canada, that's way too big. So I wanna type in Vancouver and select the one in British Columbia. And then I also wanna click this pencil icon again and I'm gonna add my second location, which is Squamish, specifically with a 25 mile radius around both. Now I'm going to untick this box because I just want the ads to show only in those two locations. I don't wanna give Facebook any wiggle room on this and I don't want them to show an ad to someone let's say somewhere else in Canada because the algorithm thinks it's more likely for them to sign up there I want specifically my ads to be shown only in those two locations so I'm gonna untick this box for that reason in terms of ages I'm gonna leave this fully open same as genders I don't want any custom audiences this is not a retargeting campaign or anything of the sort so I'm not gonna touch this either and in terms of detail targeting we're not gonna be adding any interests or anything of the sort so I'm gonna leave that open too and in terms of languages all languages 
is fine for this. Right now, I nearly have my ad set done. The next thing we wanna just do is check that our placements are correctly showing on all of them. So what you can do, you can select the different placements that your ads can run on. However, like I said, usually going full broad, especially on the placements at the start is the right move. You'll usually end up getting a better cost per result that way anyway. This is something I'm not going to touch either. I suggest that down the line, once you start getting results, you can start looking at the results for different placements. And from there, your top performing ones, you can target just those in a new ad set as an optimization. But at the start, I suggest you leave it full open. That's it for the ad group. We're all done here and I'm gonna click next and I'm gonna start creating the ad and the embedded lead form. In terms of the ad in this campaign, I'm gonna test three different images and have the same embedded lead form for all three images. So it would make sense for me to call my first one image one. If you have videos, call it video one. I suggest you actually do try videos and images. It's often a good play to try both. But for now, I only have three images, so I'm just gonna call it image one. Next, it asks for the identity, so make sure that your Facebook page is correctly set as well as the Instagram account. Next, for the ad setup, I'm going to create a single image or video ad, not a carousel. So that's all set, so I'm gonna scroll down. And in terms of the destination, so this is where things change. I'm not bringing the traffic to a landing page. I'm just gonna pop up an instant lead form. So you should not have a final URL in place. Instead, you should have this instant form option set up here. This is looking fine. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna scroll past this and we're gonna create the ad first and then we're gonna create the instant lead form. So I'm gonna scroll past this right now and set up my ad creative. So I'm gonna click on this box right here, click on the image ad. Then I'm gonna upload my first ad, which is this one right here. Click next right here, click next. And in terms of my primary text, so I have my copy ready. So I'm gonna copy and paste this into here. And in terms of the headline, I'm gonna have the headline sign up to receive your 10% off discount code. As my call to action, there's a couple different options you could have. You can either have sign up or learn more. Typically I find for lead gen that learn more gets you a better cost per result. So I'm gonna go with that one and click on next and click on done. So now my ad is in place. So what we have is we have an ad, which will show the creative as well as the ad copy in the headline. The only thing we have to do now is create the instant form. So when someone clicks on learn more, we wanna create that form that pops up to get the person to fill out their information. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna scroll back up to the top where it says instant form and I'm gonna create a form. I'm gonna call this SWS form like this and I'm gonna optimize it for more volume. There's three different options. You can have more volume, higher intent or rich creative. Typically speaking, you wanna select one of the first two. It just depends on which type of strategy you wanna go for. If you have a lot of time and you're able to call up all of these leads and do some good reach out to all of them, then I suggest you go with more volume. That way you just have more leads coming in and you can kinda of just handle them on your own in your own time. However, if you're limited on time and you want a higher quality type of lead, but less leads coming in in the first place, then higher intent might be the better option for you. But for this strategy specifically, I'm gonna click on more volume. In terms of flexible form delivery, so you can go optimized or manual. I'm gonna click on optimized here. All this does is it won't change the questions that come up that you're asking people for. So things like your email address or your phone number or the full name, especially if they're not optional. So all it'll do is it'll just optimize the image background sometimes if Facebook thinks it's the good thing to do. And sometimes it will also change the order of the questions if the algorithm thinks that someone is more likely to fill out your form with a difference in terms of when the questions appear. However, it will not actually change the questions themselves and it won't remove any of the questions, especially the ones that are not optional. I'm gonna leave this to optimize. I've seen better results using it. I'm then gonna click next. For my intro, it's just gonna ask for a short headline. So I have one ready right here. So my headline is going to be get 10% off your SWS pass this summer. And as my description, which I also have ready, I'm going to have the newsletter sign up includes 10% off any pass purchases you make for the rest of the summer, receive any promotions and future discounts for gear rentals and weekly updates on future forecasts and social events. That way, when someone sees this lead form, they know exactly what they're going to get in return by filling out their name, email, and phone number, which is what I'm going to ask for in the next step. That's all done. And here's where you start adding your questions. So specifically for this, I only want the name, the email, and the phone number, and specifically in that order. Generally speaking, when you ask for the phone number last, you'll get a better cost per lead. None of these are optional for me. So I'm gonna untick these boxes, and I'm specifically gonna order them by full name first, email, then phone number. And you can see on the right here on the display, this is how it's going to appear. Now, this is where you can change things depending on your business. If you want to ask someone for certain extra pieces of information, you can click add category here and Facebook has a bunch of different options on the different types of information you can get out of someone. So feel free to customize this to what you're trying to achieve as your goal. But for this, all I want is the full name, email, and the phone number. The only thing I'm gonna write down here is my description, which I can just put, please enter your information 
below like that. So now this is what it's going to look like once someone has clicked that initial greeting on the instant form. I'm then going to click on next. In terms of a privacy policy, if you have one, put the link from your website into here. If you don't, just switch this off. I don't have one on hand right now, so I'm gonna switch this off and just click on next. Finally, the last step it will ask you for is the thank you page. So once someone gives you the information you want, what essentially do you want to do with that prospect from that moment onwards? Do you want them to just leave or do you want them to redirect to a website page? This is where I can just say, for example, thank you for signing up as my headline right here. And since I'm giving a 10% off promo code, in the description is where I can actually give this promo code. So I can put your promo code to receive 10% off future pass sales is, and I can put the promo code, which is summer 2025, like that. That way I stay true to my word in terms of the promise I gave them in the headline of my ads. So now my description's done. The next thing it's asking for is the additional action. So this is what you want the person to do once they have seen this thank you page. So for me, what makes sense is I just gave them the promo code. So it might make sense for me to redirect them to the website, specifically this landing page right here where I'm selling passes. That way, after getting their discount code, I bring them straight to the page where they can actually buy one. So what I can do is I can copy this URL and I can click on go to website. So I can paste the link right here and the call to action is buy your pass today. That way, what I have here is I have the promo code which gives them 10% off. And then if they click this button down here, buy your pass today, they'll be linked to this website right here where they can instantly buy their pass and apply that promo code that I just gave them. There's different ways of doing this as an additional action. Let's say you're offering a lead magnet. Instead of redirecting them to a website, you can let them view a file. This can be your lead magnet as a PDF, which essentially unlocks once they have already filled out your lead form. There's multiple different ways of doing this, but for me, all I had to do was give them a 10% off promo code, and then now I'm directing them to the website. That way I can get them to use it right away. And from there, I'm just going to click on create form because our form is all done, and I'm going to click on publish. And so now my campaign is published. Keep in mind that when you publish a campaign, Facebook will automatically turn the campaign off. So what you want to do is turn it off in case you're not ready to run ads right away. So what I want to do now is within my campaign view here, I can click on the campaign on the top left and make sure that that is just toggled off for now. That way my ads do not start showing. And so now what we have in place is we have a campaign that is targeting both Vancouver and Squamish, which is showing an instant lead form from Facebook, which is essentially giving in exchange for a phone, email, and full name, a 10% off discount code, which then redirects to the website. So even if someone doesn't go to the website, we still end up with that lead, which we can then use in our email marketing. So this campaign is not done yet because all I have is one image. What I want to do is add two more images. That way we're testing different styles of creatives to our campaign. So before turning this campaign on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two more images and then I'm also going to split up my targeting. That way I have one ad set for Vancouver and one for Squamish. But before I do that, if you like this video so far, feel free to subscribe and give this video a like below. That way you're up to date on all my future videos to come. Now to add two more ads, what I want to do is I want to click on this right here and click on duplicate and I'm going to make two copies right here like this in the original campaign and click on duplicate. What I want to do is for my image one copy here, I want to change this to image two and my other one, I want to change this to image three. And all I'm gonna do is change the creative. I'm not gonna change anything else. I'm not gonna change the copy or the headline or the instant form. All I wanna do here is test different creatives and how well they work one compared to the others. I'm gonna do my image two first. And what I'm gonna do here is scroll down to my ad creative, click the trash can on this, add media, click on add image. And I'm gonna add my second photo, which is this. Click next, just double check that my copy is the same thing. Click next and click done. And that way my image two is all done as you can see right here. And from there, all I wanna do do is the same thing for image three. So I'm going to click the trash can on this one too. Click on add image right here and find my third image, which is this one right here. Click on next, make sure my copy is all accurate. Click on next and click on done. So now what I have is I have one ad set with three different ads. All I want to do now is split my ad set into two ad sets. That way I specifically have one ad set for Vancouver and one ad set for Squamish. That way I can clearly see the difference in results between the two different locations I'm targeting. If you're doing just one location as you're targeting, I suggest you just leave it to one ad set for now and then you can try different types of ad sets such as interests or lookalikes down the line. But if you're doing two locations, what you can do is essentially split this up. That way you have one ad set for each location. What I can do here is I can click on this ad set right here and click on duplicate duplicate on this. I'm going to duplicate it in the original campaign in just one copy like this. And so now I have two ad sets which are identical to each other. Both of them have the same three ads underneath them. So I'm going to work on this one first. I want to make this one my Vancouver one. So I'm going to change the title and put Vancouver here. And where I have my targeting down here, 
where it's currently targeting both Squamish and Vancouver. I'm gonna remove Squamish from this ad group. And for this ad group now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove Vancouver from this title and call this one Squamish. Scroll down and I'm gonna click on X on Vancouver. And now that I have all that in place, I can essentially click on publish. So what I have now is a campaign targeting two different ad groups, one for each location. And each ad group has three different creatives that we're testing, all of which have the same lead form embedded in them. Keep in mind, there's other ways to do this too. You can always test more creative. So instead of having just three ads, you can have, let's say five ads of which two of them are videos. It's something I actually suggest you do. The more creative testing you do often, the better results you'll end up getting in the future. And in terms of your targeting, you can always try interest targeting, lookalikes, retargeting, things of the sort. Like I said, when you first start out, I suggest going full broad. And if you have two different locations in place, you can split them up like I just did in this example. So just like that, you're all done. This campaign, if you turn it on, should start getting you leads fairly quickly and you should start getting new prospects signing up within your instant lead forms to your pipeline. So one thing to note here is all the leads you generate out of a campaign like this, the leads will end up in the Facebook database. A lot of you might be using a CRM or your Gmail to manage these leads. So maybe you want your leads to end up there instead. I do have a video that shows you how to connect your Facebook leads to a CRM or to your Gmail. It uses an automation tool called Zapier. Feel free to watch the video. I show you exactly how to do that and I'll put the link below. But apart from that, with this video, you should be able now to create a campaign which generates you leads in the first place. If you're having trouble doing this, you can always get me to run your Facebook ads for you. If that's something you'd like me to do, you can feel free to book a call with me using the link in the description below. And apart from that, if you have any questions on anything I explained today, you can feel free to drop that in the comments as well. Hopefully you got some value out of this video. And apart from that, I'll see you on the next one.